Here. 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 Any addition or correction to the minutes of the meeting of August the 24th? If not, they will be approved. Special meeting of August the 31st. Any addition or correction to those? If not, they will be approved. Okay, special meeting September the 8th. Any addition or correction of those minutes? If not, they will be approved. Okay, I think we have. Uh, yeah. Okay, we've got a visiting fireman here with us today. Shannon Johnson, Williamson County Tourism Bureau, is going to give us an update. Good evening and thank you for allowing me to come tonight and share the great news. Once again, the tourism expenditures have increased. The industry as a whole saw a major increase in travelers and expenditures statewide, but tonight, as many of you were able to hear the statewide numbers a couple of months ago, tonight I'm gonna to touch on the key components of Williamson County only. The expenditures for 2014 is what we're looking at. From 2013 to 2014, we saw a 3.1% increase. The total was $128 million in expenditures for Williamson County. Those are indirect and direct expenditures. The payroll for tourism industry was 24.9 million. The state tax receipts were 7.9 million which was an increase of 2.6 percent over 2013. the local tax receipts was 2.76 million which was an increase of 2.9 percent over 2013. we're holding at still around a thousand tourism related jobs in the county and we are listed as the 21st county out of 102 counties for tourism expenditures and still leading the southern illinois region and when we talk about southern illinois region it is mount vernon down when you talk to someone from the state of illinois they consider fairview heights straight across the state to the indiana border and down but when i look at it and most of my colleagues they look at Mount Vernon down. We do lead that. Jefferson County was closest to us at 106 million in tourism expenditures, and we're at 128 million, so they're not really all that close. So we like to brag about ourselves, and that's this is the time to do it. The numbers show, the stats show. Our average hotel room, because you have to keep in mind that some of our hotels are what we call economy then we have our mid-range and then we have our higher end lodging facilities our average room night is around ninety dollars per night doing the backwards math on the lodging tax and the average room night for 2014 we booked approximately hundred and ninety thousand room nights that's a lot of room nights when our total inventory for the county is around 1423 rooms and that includes the lowest of low ends to like the the primitive cab the cabins like at scout cabins and things of that nature all the way to the holiday inns so we count all lodging facilities based on our website our social media interactions and the information that we get from the state 
Our average traveler age is 35 to 54 years of age. The female is still making, predominantly making the travel decisions at 60% over 40% male. They're still coming from the top five states being other parts of Illinois. So we know that the statecation, as we call it in this industry, is still very popular. So they're still coming from outside of a 50 mile radius within the state, coming from Wisconsin, Indiana, Michigan, and Ohio. So those are the top four. And then the fifth would be other parts within our own state. Our markets that are still strong for Williamson County are the sports market. We're still focusing on baseball, softball, fishing, bowling, and golf. We are seeing a big increase in golf. We work very closely with Cocopelli. We see a lot of traffic coming into Cocopelli from the Wisconsin area and the Michigan area. Jesse Barge and I work very closely when we go to golf shows. We do the St. Louis Golf Show, the Wisconsin Golf Show, we will add this year, and we do a Chicago Golf Show. They always send a golf pro with me because I am not a golfer. Made sure when I took the job, I did not know how to golf. Didn't have to know how to golf to take the job. So they send one with me. And also Crab Orchard in Carterville sends a golf pro with me. So we are very well represented in the golf facet of our industry. So we do book golf packages in groups. We do have some packaging from some of our lodging facilities that want to do discounted rates. So we're seeing that still on the rise. We have seen industry-wise a large increase in faith-based travel, which is something that I have been researching over the last few months since our new fiscal year has started. So we will be looking at a few faith-based travel trade shows coming into the new calendar year if budget permits. I may actually take on a few of the faith-based travel shows that are closer to home that don't cost as much. Because as like everyone else, Williamson County is getting hit with no state funding. It, what we do receive from Illinois, from the Office of Tourism, is about a quarter of our budget. So we have had to really buckle down right now and look at all of our marketing initiatives and rework our marketing plan for the first quarter of our fiscal year that will end at the end of this month, but things are going well. And as you can see, we definitely are attracting the visitors. And the good news is where we are marketing Williamson County, that too is where the state, their independent research company is showing that that's where the travelers are coming from. So we are marketing as well as where the state is marketing um, their big marketing campaigns. We do have a photography crew that was in town about two weeks ago. They're hitting the locally owned and operated boutiques, restaurants. We had a, a, about three of them and my one of my staffers at the Hub two or three weeks ago. They got some wonderful shots. Those shots will be used on our website, in our visitor's guide, in several of our publications, as well as, like I said, some boutiques and locally owned restaurants. We were able to pull a few models from the 20s hideout into the square as the sun set one night. Got a beautiful shot of the square that we'll be using. So we really do take the time and the effort to make our guides that we publish in-house with an outside marketing firm something that is true to our area which makes us unique from other bureaus and other areas when you look at our website and you go to the holiday inn of marion you're truly seeing photography from that lodging facility here in marion not a corporate stock photo that we've been provided so we are taking the time and the initiatives to make what we do count and unique and market ourselves as a vibrant destination. We hope that you can see that in the numbers and we hope that we can continue to increase those numbers year after year. I've been with the Bureau eight years now and each year we've seen an increase in those expenditures and we hope to continue to see that. I do have some sheets that I wanna leave you with that gives a synopsis of what I went over. And that's really all I had if you don't have any questions. <clears throat> Got a couple of questions. Absolutely. First, first uh, I want to commend and congratulate you on the good work that you've done. Thank you. It, it's really been exemplary, and uh, we're proud that you're doing what you are. Uh, having said that, 
Uh, you mentioned, I think, that there are 1,423 rooms in Williamson County. How many of those would be in Marion? I would have to look at the master sheet. I am not 100% sure, but if you're looking at some of the, basically you have the Pin Oak in Carterville, which yeah. doesn't offer many rooms. You have a small lodging facility in Johnston City, a couple in the county, but the majority of our rooms are in Marion. So I would say probably 1,395. <laughs> if that's a wild guess. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, I, I thought it would uh, be substantially the most of them. Yes. So, uh, anybody have a question, comment? Shane, yeah. you finding any downfall with our state budget deadlocked and seeing any, any repercussions from that so far? For my office? For, for tourism, for your office, for... I'll be very honest with you. I don't come from a tourism background. I come from a business and law firm background. So it was always very important for me to make sure that we had a working budget of at least one year operating fund in the coffers when I came on board. And that is what we have always done. So right now with bureaus across the state that typically are running paycheck to paycheck, we are not having to do that because we have had money that we have saved over the eight years I've been there and then some that we have not yet had to dip into our savings because we have been so frugal. My fear is if a budget does not come to fruition by January 1 that we may start to have to dip into those funds if we don't start seeing some type of grant funding by the first of next fiscal year, we could probably have to look at some type of maybe furlough days or cutting one of my full-time people down to part-time, something of that nature. But right now my office has not seen a major hit because we have worked so diligently to prepare for the state shortfalls. But I can say from an industry standpoint, there are some of our sister bureaus across the state that are struggling for lack of preparedness. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Um, I, I think uh, Commissioner Ranella brought this up and um, we have had uh, several people ask about it. Uh, I do recall that one of the things we discussed earlier was that it was going to be a future Eagle Scout project. Uh, have you talked to uh, Steve uh, lately? It was my understanding he said that there was somebody undertaking that project right now. Uh, well, Steve, Steve will be here in a little bit. He had a he had something going on at the okay, hub, well, then we'll so we can up. ask him when he gets there. Yeah. But it was something we that was going to happen. Um, it's you know we anticipated even have a place where it's supposed to be, yeah. but I did have marked that it was supposed to be an Eagle Scout project. So okay, er er Ernie Renella was by the other day, and he wanted to know. Yes, he asked me about it on Saturday at the parade too. Well, you talk about an Eagle Scout project. Now we don't expect an Eagle Scout to provide his own monies no, to buy no. the They would just head the project. Okay. And the, uh, and we've done another... And work it together, but the, the, yeah, we'll I remember we'll what come Joey up with did at the... Yeah, and, we, we have done another project. It was just they headed it up and did a lot of the yeah. labor themselves. Has, yeah. has he been home lately? Joey? He needs to pick some weeds at the, his farm. Oh, he's, oh. he's um, <laughs> really out of town. Uh, okay. But uh, we can ask Steve Ryan when he comes. All right, have a good care of that. Well, do, 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 well is it going to I don't know if it does or not. I mean, we, I think we need to uh, allow somebody. Well, let's see what us. Steve knows about what the, is going on now. He, he's the guy that knows about the uh, scout program, I think. Right. So where, where, where did the polls come from? 
City Walls. Okay. Mm -hmm. Brian Fisher had that up? No. No. I bought it. Out of gas tanks. That's <laughs> <laughs> all it was special for them yeah. there. Oh, okay. okay. We, all right. Do you know how much they were? I, I mean, we don't want something bigger no, than I, that I there. Pay attention on a small amount like yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah, well, we, we, we'll put that together. Let's wait and see what has been done and, and then try to coordinate and work things through. Uh, okay. Let's go to number four. Ordinance with respect to boring the streets. We need to table that and allow me to finish it. Need to table that, okay. Is, well, is, that, is that something separate than the... Uh, the uh, cutting the streets? Yes. That's a different ordinance. And you're looking at that one as well, too? I'm trying to do them where it would be one ordinance covering them both. Okay. Have you been out today at Russell and uh, West Main Street? Our favorite borers have gone through and taken up concrete street on both sides of, of uh, Russell Street with cones. And I don't think we're supposed to be breaking up our concrete streets or going it. Yeah. And we've got cone sitting there with two potholes on each side of Russell Street, the traffic and backing up. That's okay. the same people that did the others. Oh, okay. Well, uh, is this that X to that or something? Yeah. See, well, uh, obviously, uh, obviously, we've got to get those people in yeah. and get some uh, rules laid down. And, well, and we're remiss if we don't. They're well, supposed to come in here tomorrow to talk about it. I said, Doug and Phillips, I love you, Doug, you're on the street. Well, he didn't know, so I was supposed to be here tomorrow. Okay. Did, did you know about them mo uh, boring where they are? I didn't know about that location. Doug called me and told them that they thought they were going to put coal patch down, and he said he wanted to make sure he told them what I was telling him. He said, I want concrete. And I said, our permit says seven inches of concrete with crushed stone underneath it. Well, they've yeah. got gravel filled it up with cones around it for now. Yeah. Well, one of the holes uh, I called the water department had was full of water. Well, I, I think we're going to have to have somebody from the city there with them. Yeah, no business cutting up our streets. Uh, that's that's the the because Yale we were consistently been. having trouble right, we with them. Had, we did have that discussion. Well, we, we'll put it into action. We'll have somebody from the street department there to make sure they're doing what they ought to do. Assuming we have somebody in the street department who knows what they ought to do. I'm looking for somebody to hire. You, well, you, you may have to have people from street, sewer, and water. <coughs> you know, well, it, it yeah. depends. It depends on the situation. But, well, one of the things I think we need to consider in this ordinance is that we limit the amount of boring being done in the city at one specific time. And, uh, I think a couple weeks ago, we had three different companies boring in the city. And, you know, well, it, it's just yeah. a nightmare. I, I, I know... I know with the water department, you know, we had all our guys out do, uh, working for them, you know, making you know making sure that you know that they're not getting into our water lines and tell them, you know, hey. And your day-to-day -day stuff has to go by the wayside. Yeah. So you know, it just it's. Well, it's high time we sat down and got this organized. So you're. Uh, what time are you meeting? Uh, we have a set of time. Yeah. But, uh, Doug told me if we come in here tomorrow, we'll make a call and find out. Oh, okay, and be sure and let uh, Anthony know. Cause he's I'll, have, I'll definitely, I'll have Scott Connell up here. I'll be out of town tomorrow, but I'll have Scott okay. up here. So. All right, have Scott up yeah. here. And then uh, you may want to have Brent. Uh, Brent. Okay. 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 Brent. Okay. Brent. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. I don't know why I keep thinking you're the sewer man, but uh, Brent. I, yeah. 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 It's, it's been a okay. nightmare. All right, having said that, let's go to number five. You got the uh, bids? Bid, let them have, that's the Cherry Street, two bids, maybe they can have to go. Two bids for demolition of uh, the house and garage on Cherry Street. Maybe you should go. Next one. <coughs> Neat cut, 1110 West Cherry, tear down house and garage, haul off to EP approved landfill, fill in basement, level one, $3,950 even. Okay, what 
Mm -hmm. uh, Terra Pro excavating is demolition and removal of two-story structure, 1110 West Cherry, filling of basement, removal of landscape debris, 7,000. Okay, that takes care of Cherry. Now, what do you guys got? We got the uh, South Liberty. South Liberty. I got one from Neat Cut. Tear down the hall. Level a lot for $2,900. Mine's Terra Pro. Uh, this is on the South Liberty Street 510. Um, demolition removal of double wide trailer. Removal of landscape debris. Total of $4,000. Even. Okay, it appears that the meat cut is low for the 1110 West Cherry uh, in the amount of $3,950. What's your pleasure? Second. All over. Commissioner Vanilla? Yay. Commissioner Hightower? Yay. Commissioner Webb? Yay. Commissioner Goss? Yay. Mayor Yay. Yay. It appears that. Uh, Deep cut was a uh, low bid at $2,900 for demolition of the uh, buildings at 510 South Liberty. Uh, what is your pleasure? We will accept the low bid of $2,900. Second. Call the roll. Commissioner Manella? Yay. Commissioner Hightower? Yay. Commissioner Webb? Yay. Commissioner Dodd? Yay. Commissioner Yay. Yay. Dale, you did say, oh, there he is. Can't miss me tonight. Yeah. <laughs> That's her happy song. Oh, you, got say, my... you did say Steve was going to be here. Okay. okay. They wanted to know if you know anything about We have a We have an Eagle Scout group that has. Um... Okay. Sure. Come on up. And we'll Absolutely. Kill two birds with one stone. Yeah. Absolutely. Sorry for my, uh, my dress. We had a soccer game this evening for my daughter. So uh, we do have an Eagle Scout group that we've gotten in touch with. Uh, that is going to look to do the the flagpole for us and part of our uh, monument for the building and everything like that so we're finalizing those details uh, depending upon whether we probably will still hold off to the spring is what that looks like um, but it just depends on how fast he wants to move with uh, the eagle scout project well uh, we, we, we've got to find out what the plan is in other words, just because the young fellow's got a project doesn't mean that that's necessarily what we want. Oh, very true. Uh, so I think before it proceeds too far, we, we need to have uh, a plan, a drawing, and uh, some... Agree completely. I'll present that for the next council meeting. Okay. I'd love to have that flag up there before Governor's Day. Yeah, we don't need to wait next year. This, this can... Be, and, and if necessary, we'll provide sure. the... Uh, uh, young Eagle Scout uh, with hand warmers and earmuffs. So <laughs> Not a problem. Yeah. Okay. Will this, will this be lit, lit or it just... Uh, yes, it will be lit. Okay. How long does the project okay. take? It shouldn't take too long as far as that goes. There's a couple projects that Doug Phillips is working on uh, as far as a, a sock trench along the buildings. We have a lot of water that sits kind of close to the building there. So there's that project that will have to take place first. Okay, then we'll expect you to have us say something next time. You'll have it. All right, very good. Now let's get on to your reason for being here. You got it. Uh, you have something about the purchase of fitness equipment. Yes, sir. Uh, we budgeted in capital expenses for this year $10,000 um, for the additional weight equipment upstairs, such as the actual plate weights themselves, the actual 45-pound weights, 35-pound weights. Uh, we, we realized that we didn't really have enough of those after opening. Uh, we kind of just put that into the budget. We figured we'd start building those up over that time. Uh, went ahead and reached out to Innovative Fitness, who was who provided us with the equipment in the first place there. Uh, with their price quotes, they came in around $16,000. Uh, as we are not in a contract with SFM anymore, they took away their discount, so it was going to be flat sixteen. After working with uh, Chris Conti on that one, he knocked around 5000 off on that, bringing it down to a total of about eleven seven. I don't have that directly in front of me. I apologize. Uh, down to about eleven seven there. Yeah, is that what it is? Eleven seven. Uh, and obviously, it's, it, it's a it's a pretty uh, heavy thing since we're getting a bunch of weight there. So the freight is uh, pretty extensive on that. Will the floor ceiling? hold up this kind of weight? Absolutely. 
It was built for that. All right, all right. Good news for you, Officer Burns. You're going to have more weights coming your way. Yay. <laughs> Uh, okay, you, you say the 35-45s? Uh, uh, we're getting a whole slew of them from, from the fives all the way up, but we didn't have any 35-pound plates in the entire facility, so that's the bulk of the ones that we're getting there. That kind of what Ivan's been wanting? That is exactly what Ivan's been wanting. Uh, he also wanted a bench, didn't he? He wants, a, he wants a particular bench, but that one's a little bit, uh, that's, that, that'll put us in a little bit of a size issue. I don't know where, where we'll get that one in there. Well, you know, you have a world champion. We have the, that's right. Absolutely. So we yeah, yeah, international champion, yeah. yeah. He just won this one the last, well, yeah, two weeks ago. He yeah. was going across. Yep, now he's starting his training for the next one. And, and, uh, very, very interesting because uh, I think he uh, usually, well, of course, he, he lifts according to his age and his body weight. Typically, he is in the 143-pound range. But he did something to booger up one of his shoulders. And so to uh, be able to compete, he dropped down to the 133 weight deal. Cutting weight. He's cutting weight. Uh, yeah, he, he, he cut his body weight. And you would think that that would uh, uh, diminish his uh, strength. And what does he do? He blows all those other people away. <laughs> I, I That's Ivan. Know. I don't think it matters what weight he lifts at, he's going to win. Uh, yes. uh, I, I told him one day, I said, uh, I lift weights uh, for a while and I got up to 175 pounds. Uh, I could, what, what do you call it? Uh, jerk and... Um, clean and jerk. Yes, jerk. Clean and jerk. Or clean and jerk, yeah. yeah. Got up to 175 pounds. That was my weight. I put that barbell down and I've never lifted since. <laughs> you maxed out. That's your goal. <laughs> now, now here, you set a goal, you achieved it, and you moved on to the next one. <laughs> now, now here, here's Ivan. He, he usually lifts about double his weight. Just, just absolutely. Uh, he weighed 133 pounds, and he lifts something like a 260. He's a marvel. There's no doubt about it. Yeah, just absolutely. And he's 70. 273, something like that. Yeah. Just absolutely amazing. Well, I knew he was wanting these. He didn't ask you if that was. Absolutely. Yeah, good. Okay, what's your pleasure? I'd like a motion to accept the uh, bid of $11,720 for weights. I'll second. Call roll. Commissioner Manella? Yay. Commissioner Hightower? Yay. Commissioner Webb? Yay. Commissioner Goss? Yay. Mayor Butler? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Proposed ordinance 3277. This is a professional service agreement with uh, Jacob and Klein, our TIF consultants and economic development group to amend the Skyline TIF. We have um, one project and possibly two that will, uh, one will bring a new business to town and um, we did an inducement agreement on it several meetings ago. So this would be the amendment that we could uh, amend that um, there's going to be one project and then due to a fire uh, on commercial drive there will probably be another project to add to this but it would be worthwhile because it is bringing new sales tax dollars to town by this amendment and they've already started on this pending uh, a as soon as we uh, if the council agrees to it they'll be ready to start okay now their fees I assume that we will pay, but then we recoup uh, from the operation of the agreement. Yes. yes. Okay. So their fees would be part of our uh, eligible costs. You, right, you're right. So it's kind of a... Uh, okay. Otherwise, uh, are the provisions in this uh, service agreement the same as... Yes, it's their standard agreement with for us. Uh, and it would be following the Skyline TIF as far as that time frame. 
I mean, it doesn't extend or do anything else with uh, to the skyline. Okay. Any questions? All right. If not, what's your pleasure? With respect to ordinance thirty-two seventy-seven. Second. Call the roll. Mr. Rodello. Yay. Yay. Mr. Webb. Yay. Mr. Goss. Yay. Mr. Butler. Yay. Okay. That pretty well covers the finish. You got something? We're going to divide three in us. Item three on the finish. Uh, we're, going to we're, we're going to enter executive session of May. I, I make a motion to pay the monthly bills as funds become available. Second. Call the roll. Mr. Manella? Yay. Mr. Hightower? Yay. Mr. Webb? Yay. Mr. Goss? Yay. Mayor Butler? Yay. That's it. Anything else? No, sir. You got no business? No, no consent agenda? Well, I want to talk about that on the. No, there. We don't have a Okay. Oh, uh, no, I want to talk about B and consent. So it's just it. Yeah. Oh, okay. You have anything else? Yeah. No. 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 Oh, Mac. Anybody have something we need to take up? Okay. We need a motion to go into the executive session. For personnel. For personnel matters. Make that motion. Go into executive session for discussion of personal matters. Personnel matters. Second. Second. Call roll. Mr. Manella? Yay. Mr. Hightower? Yay. Mr. Webb? Yay. Mr. Goss? Yay. Mayor Butler? Yay. I want to commend the council on the uh, expeditious manner in which you, you conducted business. We've been in session 30 minutes and look at what we've covered. You, you guys are amazing. Yeah, we are. <laughs> well, Oh, yeah, because we don't, we can go right there. Uh, we don't go right there. Oh, Greg, don't be so picky now. Just, just